Santosh Gore is a seasoned IT professional with over 18 years of industry experience and he's super passionate about problem solving through design thinking. In today's episode, let us chat with him. This is the Guiding Voice podcast series, TGV for a Better Future. Friends, I'm your host Navin Samala, just a fellow IT professional on a mission to make the world a better place to live. Through the Guiding Voice, we drive conversations that matter conversations that add value to your life and to your career. Thank you so much for joining me. And we are extremely pleased to have Ash part of our journey today. Ash, I'm super happy to have you as a guest. And in fact, it's a much awaited episode. Finally, we are here. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. Thank you for having me. And it's completely my pleasure. I've been uh, listening to your podcast and it's been really, really amazing to have gone through those leaders talking about so many uh, different topics. So thank you so much for having me. All right. So pleasure to host you. And uh, without further ado, Ash, let's get into the conversation and maybe let's start with uh, a brief sneak peek into your career journey, wherein you can highlight a few <laughs> milestones, okay, which helped okay. you. All right. So my career is a tricky one. Uh, you can call it uh, from the three idiots. I'm one of those idiots who studied something else and is doing something absolutely different. To be honest, I am not very proud of my earlier uh, education, right? I barely got through my 10th and 12th. Uh, I was packed from Mumbai to Pune so that I had no friends and I started focusing on studies. And that's where I kind of graduated and then started doing my chartered accountancy. Uh, I liked the subject. I could understand it. I It made sense to me. So I got uh, immersed into that uh, career path. But then there was another surprise. So while I was doing my CA, we used to go for audits. And there I I was auditing Bajaj Tempo, which is Force Motors now. And they were going through an ERP implementation process. right? And I was part of the re-engineering group the, and auditing group while that uh, implementation was happening. And that really got me interested in the ERP world and suddenly chartered accountancy started feeling very boring auditing taxation or law all that started feeling very boring so suddenly I was looking at this as an alternate path and I took up a couple of uh, trainings on ERP and business intelligence and that was it CA was out of window I had done my CA inter but I didn't want to do uh, my CA finals to the shock of my family and I had taken this and I got a job in Steria, uh, which was a service company. I worked there for almost 10 years, uh, Naveen, and uh, I did so many roles there. So I started at the most junior level where I was a functional consultant given my finance uh, background, my accountancy background. I was a functional consultant for the finance uh, implementation for a client called Biz Biz uh, British Telecom. It was a big client. So I started as a functional consultant started moving up the ladder and then went into business analyst roles then became project manager then took on service management then took on program management i kept growing through the ladder it was in 2015 that i moved to adp where they were trying to set up a business analyst group which was first of a kind and uh, there was no earlier precedence of having a business analyst group. So they, they wanted somebody who knew what business analysts uh, setting up a practice means. So that's how I joined ADP. And it's been seven years in ADP now. And I'm working right now as head of service uh, for UK payroll. So that's what I'm doing. Quite, quite a diversified and interesting journey you have gone through. And now I'm really curious, out of this diversified portfolio of experiences and all, what are top three things I've attributed to your success, be it in terms of right. skills or anything? Yeah, yeah. if I look back now, at that point of time, it all was a very muddy scene. I was just, I was myself scared. But if I look back now, I think there are three things that I, and I know the answer to this, uh, Naveen, interestingly, because I, keep talking to my son about the lessons that I've learned, right? So first is always be a student. At any level, one thing I've refrained from doing is act like I'm an expert. I absolutely do not uh, believe that. Second, because that helps me to absorb 
so much knowledge that's around me it helps me to absorb that second is always look for change i am always looking to change something either my role or within my role whatever is cu- currently happening i'm trying to change that i hate status quo and the third is i try multiple things at once so you would never see me focused on one thing i, I would be trying multiple things now this may seem counter uh, intuitive uh, navin but how it helps me is i may try eight nine things at a time not all are going to click but that one thing that clicks is what takes my career further if i invest everything on that one thing it generally can be very demotivating if it doesn't work but because i have four five things uh, going on simultaneously something always works and that's something that takes my career forward so <laughs> this is these are the three things takeaways that i've had from my journey so far wonderful summary and it reminds me of those adp days right uh, where we wanted to set up this design thinking part and we have always uh, been discussing about okay how can we make things better and all i i still remember those 14 months that we have traveled together and uh, that brings me to my next question in terms of uh, business problem solving right so yeah. in general problems are treated as hiccups and people are scared of problems be it personal professional but let's confine this to the business problem area and how how should someone approach business problems so that at the end of the day they are successful in resolving them okay. so the most important thing i think your question uh, was a nice question there because if you want to move up the hierarchy uh, in an organization the first thing you should not be is scared of problems because if you have to move up the hierarchy that means you have to solve problems otherwise you i don't think uh, in my role currently i do anything that is operational right all i do is try so- and solve problems try and remove frictions try and remove resistance right try and improve things when i say improve obviously there is some problem that i'm trying to uh, better right first don't be afraid of problems or enjoy problems the funny part uh, is and that's something my leaders have always been bemused is every time things start uh, stabilizing i start getting uh, destabilized because i need a problem to solve so if you want to be part of the problem solving uh, team enjoy problems i absolutely now how do you go about it there is no one way uh, navin when we were very juniors we learned something called root cause analysis that was also a problem solving technique right there are so many various uh, so each problem has a different problem solving but because my focus right now is design thinking i think what i've learned when i took up design thinking as a practice or as a, a framework of my expertise is there are always two aspects to a problem one is a qualitative aspect and second is a quantitative and any problem cannot be only looked at so if you think that you you are going to come in and uh, come up with some great creative solution that's not the only dimension the other dimension is the humanity part of it right unless you have the human touch to that uh, problem you are not able to go into solve problems and especially very difficult wicked problems right so right now the way i solve problems is first to immerse in the problem not get into solution mode i spend so much time defining the problem sometimes my audience gets irritated when is it going to start uh, solving the problem for us is still trying to define the problem but my belief is if i get the problem correct i'll get the solution right so problem defined is problem solved for me and then there are those usual uh, design thinking uh, framework where you build empathy you understand the pain areas you define the problem you observe you immerse yourself in the problem you just don't take uh, the word for it right you have to immerse into the problem and then you ideate you prototype once you feel the prototype is mature you test and you implement all these things yeah but uh, the 
question that you have asked it's not an easy one because there is no one way to there are so many different ways to solve a problem yeah my way is design thinking and i use it for wicked problems difficult problems that have not been solved by your usual everyday uh, problem solving techniques yeah it it makes absolute sense and uh, ash uh, this brings me to my next question let's keep design thinking apart the meat of the episode uh, let's park it for a while now let's talk about some common mistakes that people do while solving the problems yeah will not keep design thinking outside because i can't keep the design thinking because <laughs> that's my subject right but i'll yeah. tell you i'll give you a nice example and this is not a business problem okay but i'll give you an example of how uh, we make mistakes while solving a problem so pune traffic problem has been there for last two decades right 20 years we have been trying to solve the pune uh, traffic problem seven years back they came with a solution called brt bus rapid transport system a dedicated lane in the middle of the road uh, that will be dedicated to the bus okay it has been a super 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 failure now my thought is because the design principles were not applied to a problem they really didn't understand the problem they just thought they knew the problem they didn't immerse themselves they didn't talk to the stakeholder they didn't try and define what are they trying to solve for and then just took on some solution that was available in europe okay that's fine even if you want to take some uh, solution that is available in europe and you want to uh, implement it at least prototype it at least test it before you uh implemented wide scale that was not done all this brings me back to the design the, the design framework actually tries to help you identify the right problem not the problem that you know right so the two in my belief uh, the two common mistake is not understanding the problem correctly and second biggest is to jump to uh, problem solving or jump in solution designing i think these are the two common mistakes that i see not only at government uh, okay but uh, anywhere even in business situ- uh, situations you see the same uh, problem you think you know the problem and second you start solving before you understand it. that in my I, view yeah this reminded me of one uh, scenario especially during the covid wave 2 treatment similar approach was uh, followed okay where in one size fits all treatment is provided to the patients irrespective of their health conditions and, all, and because of which we have lost many lives right so yeah i i agree like prototyping first of all empathy has to be there and understand the problems uh, that you are solving because a problem defined well like if you are def- if you are spending more time like 80% of the time then the solution becomes obvious right like <laughs> most of the times people miss that aspect Correct. of it and thanks for bringing that now let's talk about your and my favorite topic which is about design thinking there is first let's begin with a misconception people think that design thinking is only about develop only about new product development and all right so would you like to bust yeah. that myth first yeah i think the reason why design thinking is associated with product is steve jobs right he was the first person to bring in humanity and liberal arts to product design when i say humanity and liberal arts is using creativity with the human touch right so understanding what people want how they experience thing what is their uh, experience uh, going to be like that's the humanity part of it and then using liberal arts and so uh, creating uh, amazing solutions that's where steve jobs really uh, excelled and that's why it is always associated to a product however i have not in a very limited scope uh, applied design thinking to products right mainly i have used design thinking as a problem solving framework across service operations and sometimes even to bpo industry because at the heart of it is to understand the problem and then use liberal arts and which i keep using liberal arts as a because you can have an painter or a poet solve problems for business operations right you don't because that's how 
it's you can use liberally the creative solutions available outside so it is a myth that it is only for products you can apply it one of the projects that i'm going to run navin uh is my son is moving to standard 10th next year mm-hmm. so after 9th standard we are going to go into a resort and do a design thinking workshop of how to get past this 10th milestone yeah actually so you can because i need to understand i need to build empathy with my son understand where his challenges are what he is going to go through during this set. he has to understand what my expectations are and then we get together asking and creating solutions that meet both our needs right that's how empathy is built and that's how solutions are built so you can apply design thinking anywhere mm-hmm. now let's dissect the problem solving piece using design thinking any pointers yeah. there dissect the problem i i'll give you some uh, steps that i follow yeah. while uh, design thinking right sure go ahead yeah. uh, i i kind of touched it earlier touch upon it earlier uh design thinking you have to first invest a lot of time defining the problem unless you know what the problem is you're not going to get the right solution so how do you di- uh, define the problem somebody can come to you and give you a problem statement right what they think is a problem statement but what you really need to do later is to dissect the problem dissect the problem into many different small segments of problem by talking to various stakeholders who are impacted by the problem right now that is another practice how do you build your stakeholder map or how do you get all the pain areas from your stakeholder right then you have to immerse yourself with the stakeholder you have to observe them you have to actually experience the pain that they go through right from their day starts to their day ends it could be with a service it could be with a product that they use it could be with the travel to get from a to b and then start working it could be with the time frames it could be any problem that they are facing and it's not just one stakeholder that is always uh, at your it is there are so many stakeholders it could be the user it could be the super user it could be the user who is using it on someone someone else behalf there are so many aspects to it so once you start immersing you will start building empathy and from that empathy what you will realize is what is the immediate problem that needs to be solved the problem statement may give you something very vague but as you start building that empathy with all your stakeholders you will get to know what are the two, top 3 top 4 problems that need to be solved immediately that is how you will start prioritize now once you prioritize once you know that these are the th- top 3 things that you want to solve you have to explore all the options you don't have to improve all the time what you have you can completely re- relook at the solution a lot of times successful organizations have not just gone into iterative improvement they have relooked at the solution the problem and come up with a solution that has transformed the industry right i incremental improvement is not the forte of design thinking transformation is so that's how you will start exploring you will start ideating you will choose some ideas that your users like you will create a prototype a prototype is something that they can feel they can experience not a full blown model but they can actually experience what it will mean if you think you need to improve it you improve it once the prototype is uh, pass you test it and like uh, the brt system that was implemented in pune you test it you again that's another place that you will get to experience observe and improve and from there you can implement it uh, and uh, scale later so that's how a uh, entire design thinking i have tried to put a very very uh, big framework yeah. in as short it's it's very involved it takes a lot of time but i try to kind of uh, give you a very high level brief of what design thinking does yeah absolutely and and uh, to your point on the pune brt i was surprised when i visited pune for the first time why the hell are we having bus stops in middle of the road <laughs> <laughs> i can it totally it is crazy i mean 
the bus everybody except the buses are using that road and it's a security hazard it's a traffic hazard mm-hmm. and i i didn't realize i when this was implemented it yeah. was after me taking on design thinking as a subject as my expertise mm-hmm. i realized how much was wrong with that uh, because it was not about the architecture or it was not about that it was about lack of empathy yeah. lack of understanding the stakeholders in that solution mm-hmm. and yeah mm-hmm. so that's All one right. thing that i see in hyderabad <laughs> Naveen, yeah i think whoever is planning hyderabad he has gone through the design thinking mindset he is designing things really really well yeah yeah i i i get it and i totally relate to it so ash when i heard about this design thinking for the very first time i think uh, during my uh, days at ge one popular example that i was exposed to is the shopping cart with uh, self checkout functionality right i think yeah. that was uh, Uh, something conceptualized by ideo.org who are the ideo pioneers, yeah yeah who are the pioneers in design, in, uh, in design thinking in fact uh, apple is one of the companies that has immensely benefited out of uh, ideos the services and all so likewise i have a few examples on my mind like so i'm, I'm yes. really curious to understand are there any examples that you would like to share in public forum okay out of your experience what you have done how you have benefited okay. from the design thinking principles and the methodology or framework again people term it differently somebody may call it as methodology yes. somebody might call it as principles or whatever right so overall is there anything that you like to say? i interestingly i have another term for it it's a mindset yeah. right so <laughs> now for me it's a mindset i look at everything from a design thinking mindset so yeah i have some very interesting uh, examples uh, i have in the last 5 6 years i've implemented at least uh, 18 19 transformational projects using design thinking but one which is very very uh, interesting okay it may not be the best outcome or the best uh, kind of example but it's a very interesting uh, example that i can share with you that was solved using design thinking 2019 when i took on a new role which was basically to uh, transform a product uh, support team right this team was uh, marred by all types of problems right it had a low uh, engagement score they were not motivated at all there were escalations coming all around the client experience scores were in negative they were working overwork everything there was high attrition so any problem that you could map to a team that team had that problem right and when i was briefed about what the problems are obviously you have multiple stakeholders that you talk to to understand why are we in this uh, situation so the senior management told me that uh, the team is not trained enough not skilled enough to manage the leaders are not uh, managing the governance properly when i talked to uh, the team they said we are short staff when i talked to the clients they tell me that you have no idea what client service means and three people telling me three different sometimes what happens is if three people are telling me the same problem i can at least rely on the problem statement here three people are telling me completely three different problem statements so the first thing i did was to have that somewhere in the back of the mind but start fresh to relook at the problem using design thinking so as i said i put a lot of lot of time defining the problem by dissecting the problem by immersing myself i actually sat with each associate i sat with the client to experience how he goes through what is the experience that he goes through when he uh, deals with uh, that service team there was so much immersion that happened and when i came up with the problem statement you will be surprised that none of these three statements had anything to do with the problem the problem was somewhere completely different right the problem was i don't want to dwell too much into uh, too many details navin but i'll give you a very high level uh, the problem was that nobody understood why this mm. team was set up in the first place <laughs> this team became a dumping ground for anything that people didn't know about obviously when you have a, a team that is a dumping ground 
they are not going to be super efficient now why they became a dumping ground what were the factors behind uh, making them a dumping ground was all that i had to solve right the second problem that i observed was the way it was structured so if you have a team that has conflict of interest and a team that can be reached by internal stakeholders and external stakeholders the external stakeholders are always going to lose in contacting your internal teams whereas the internal teams are always going to be able to make more noise and get their stuff done faster because of this conflict of interest and the way the teams were structured your clients always got ignored two very very simple problems but what was i told if i had said that okay these are the problems that have been told to me and let's start solving it i would have started performance managing the leaders performance managing the uh, associates start training them put them through training already i am short of time and then i have to spend time training the associates i start hiring new people because i am short stuff and then start teaching them what customer service is and start boring them with those details right all this would have been my solution but what we did was completely different we found that the problem was not this the problem was somewhere else and the solutions navin were so simple yeah that it hardly took us one month to solve a problem that existed for 3 years mm-hmm. this is also uh, remarkably the one problem that i've solved in my career that got me a quick promotion as well wow because mm. it was a problem that has been there for 3 years everybody mm. has been trying to solve it but we solved it by design thinking in three four simple moves because we built empathy we had a human touch we went to the deep of the problem we just didn't look at the superficial problem statement we went deep into it dissected it identify the crux what people look at is the symptoms a lot yeah. of time they yeah. they attribute the symptoms as a problem whereas the problem is absolutely something different if you are able to separate symptoms from problems your solutions are sometimes very easy you don't have to use artifact i trust me for this problem there was one team trying to come up with ai solutions and rpa and robotics and what not to try this problem and we solved this problem without any technology investment any any cost at all and that's why i like to quote this problem because it is not very sci-fi type right we did right. ai we put this we no it's simple common sense that we use to solve this problem with zero investment and dramatically fast uh, results dramatically fast results right and that's why i think design thinking as a framework has helped me do that mm. that's that's wonderful yeah sometimes uh, people think that complex solutions exist for complex problems but it's Correct. not the case wonderful Here we so... had the most simple uh, <laughs> solutions right 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 yeah i i i also like this uh, statement right don't don't figure out or don't work on the symptoms we need to diagnose the whole uh, disease underlying Correct. disease right that that makes more yeah. sense and it that way the countermeasure will be effective and permanent Awesome. So fabulous conversation, Ash. But uh, let's lighten up the mood of our audience. If you are ready, sure. <laughs> I'm going to kick off a quick, quick rapid fire round, wherein you can answer very crisply to some of the interesting questions. And commitment, my friend, from my side, I'm not going to put you on spot. So yeah, shall we go ahead? Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, here comes the first one. Have you ever slept in a classroom, Ash? Uh, honestly, uh, the question should be: Have I been awake in a classroom? unless it was an interesting topic i have almost 100% of the time slept in the classroom so yeah mm-hmm, with my eyes open <laughs> with my eyes open yeah that's a rare skill in fact one of my colleagues i don't want to uh, take his name he's good at that and during my ge days and we used to tease him you have to learn how to sleep like a fish <laughs> yeah let's move and ahead a trade secret yeah. i do that sometimes in meetings as well <laughs> <laughs> moving on uh, have you ever walked out of a movie halfway a lot of times i mean some of the horrendous movies that i've watched yeah don't, a lot of times yeah don't judge a uh, movie by a poster that's what uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it says all uh, right moving ahead and can you describe yourself in just one word interesting i would like 
people to think that i'm interesting i bring something that is going to start a conversation would you, know, you I, agree I, I, that i'm interesting or i concur with you because every time there is some uh, spark as you said like when you were talking about working on four to five things right i i can totally relate to that because uh, even uh, i i like doing kind of those kind of things because if you if the life is monotonous right how what is so special that people yeah. should remember us so i have always seen you correct very interesting uh, personality right so yeah good good trait to have and uh, Here comes my next one. Did you ever steal anything from anyone? I am always stealing food. I am a complete foodie. <laughs> so yeah, last last one for the rapid fire. What is one electronic gadget or the fantasy gadget that you would like to see or invent yourself? That can uh, do all the household chores without me doing anything. I mean, I hate it. So there are three, four things, right? That I keep getting scolded for keeping the towel on the bed, putting the socks in the wrong place. In fact, I, one gadget that I would love to have is somehow magically keeping all the pair of socks together. <laughs> that would be an amazing gadget because I seem to have only one of each. pair all the time I and, don't know and where the other pair is <laughs> it, it saves a lot of time it saves a lot of time and it avoids all the scolding right correct great so fabulous conversation and fabulous rapid fire with that let's flip back to the mainstream and before i let you go what will be your single piece of advice to those aspiring to make big in their careers or lives this is a question that i just got asked about uh, Two three months back, when I was kind of uh, promoted and uh, took on a new role, so obviously suddenly two months back, I had no idea how to further my career. And just because I got promoted or was uh, nominated for a promotion, everybody figured out that I know how to get promoted or I can advise people. So that question kind of sparked something of as to what do I tell him? Because just two months back, before this happened, I had no clue, and it. took me back to so navin you know i'm a runner right i run long distance yeah. uh, events indeed yeah and that's a hobby a passion and i read some uh, books one of the books that i read had this uh, wonderful story about the coach asking the student what is your philosophy not what is your goal what is your philosophy and that is an thing that i have asked myself what is my philosophy why do i work so one advice to everyone is don't have goals for yourself have a philosophy because the goal that you think is progress may not be the right goal for you for example promotion may not be or getting into people management may not be the right uh, career forward for you you have to be honest with your philosophy what do you love to do what do you enjoy once you are honest with that philosophy and you bring your work to that philosophy the career growth will happen automatically unfortunately what i see a lot and i've done that in my uh, younger days as well is we work for the outcome we work for that career aspiration yeah. we don't work for our philosophy and when we start working for that outcome when that outcome doesn't come you get demotivated yeah but if you work for your philosophy you are never going to be demotivated because you are you are achieving what is your key passion for me my passion is or my philosophy is always to have some do something that has my signature all over it when they see it they will say okay there's somewhere ash ashutosh in this uh, work right they can feel my work right that's my philosophy so i'm always trying to touch bring that touch of my signature to things now once i start doing it in everything the outcome of a promotion is not affecting me that much because i am very excited to keep doing it for it the outcomes really happen that's my experience at least i don't have to stress over it no uh, it's so powerful and i can resonate with it like uh, don't work for the results work for the cause and be true to yourself that's what i can summarize yeah. great so that has been fabulous conversation and i enjoyed the uh, talking to you as always thank you so much for being part of the guiding voice journey and really appreciate you, your Naveen. time and all the wonderful insights thank you so much for having me it was really wonderful all right so friends that was our episode with ash and uh, before we move into the trivia section here is a request to you in case if you haven't subscribed to us please subscribe 
from that where you have tuned in or found the episode and also if you have loved this conversation and found it useful request you to share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who can benefit from the guiding voice thank you in advance now let's hop into the trivia segment of today's episode if you could recollect what has been discussed with ash he mentioned about wicked the problem right so today's trivia is about wicked to design thinking design thinking specially useful when it comes to solving wicked problems which any people are scared of right but let's understand where this wicked problem term has come from the term wicked problem was coined by design theorist host rittel in 1972 and it is used to describe particularly tricky problems that were highly highly ambiguous in nature and with wicked problems there are many unknown factors and there is no definitive solution the problem or solution may be connected to another wicked problem therefore it was an ongoing process that requires design thinking so couple of examples which we can refer to in the modern day are poverty hunger and climate change right so these are the wicked problems that are existing and that have been existing and prevailing likewise you may be aware of any wicked problems and you can mention about those in the form of youtube comments or you can also comment on social media wherever you found this episode that's all for today friends thank you so much for joining me and uh, please do not forget to share your topic recommendations or guest speaker suggestions through social media or email me at the guiding voice for you at gmail.com i am your host navin samala just a fellow it professional but a passionate learner on a mission to make the world a better place to live through the conversations that matter through the conversations that add value to your life and to your career until next time bye bye see you all in the next episode with another wonderful guest with an awesome topic take care